Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And it's really an honor to be here again, and especially at an awards uh, symposium. It's, it's absolutely fantastic to be here. You know, innovation is in our blood. Uh, we are, for the third year in a row, on the top 50 uh, list of most innovative companies made by Forbes. That list is by Forbes. And today, we're here again for yet another big uh, innovation. Actually, I call it a revolution. But before we go there, I actually would like to look a little bit at trends in high-rise buildings. And thank you, Anthony, for that. I've used some of your old slides, and uh, they are pretty damn good. And I can tell you, they, they brought us towards uh, the ideas uh, which are behind this new innovation. Trend number one, you know, high-rise buildings increase in height, and they do it in an ever-increasing fashion. In 1885, we saw in principle the birth of the skyscraper with the home insurance building being 55 meters tall. In 1894, that value was already doubled, 106 meters high by the Manhattan Life Building. The next 100 meters was crossed, 200 meters was crossed in 1909 with the Metropolitan Life Building being 213 meters high. In 1930, we reached the 300 meters border. We crossed that line with the Chrysler Building being 319 meters tall. In 1972, One World Trade went beyond that, 400 meters, 470 meters. Unfortunately, that building is no longer there. 2004, we saw the first half a kilometer building with Taipei 101. Six years later, an incredible increase. Over 800 meters, that was a 300 meter leap with Bush Khalifa at 828 meters. And it's not gonna stop there. I think we all know about the Kingdom Tower uh, very soon starting to go up in Saudi Arabia over a kilometer in height. And I've heard rumors about plans for the first mile high building. So this is, this is an incredible trend. Trend number two, not only do those buildings go higher, we see more and more and more of them. And they're exponentially growing, the numbers. That light blue which you see there, those are buildings with the uh, heights of 200 meters plus. The dark blue is 300 meters plus. Both are exponentially going up. And if you really have a good look at it, you've, you, you, know, you can maybe just and just notice some of the depressions, but you practically don't see them. And this is all driven by urbanization. Trend number three, that's location. And I've heard Anthony say that many times, if you would have predicted in 1950 where the next tall building would be built, you would have said North America. And nothing is further from the truth. At this moment, the majority of high-rise buildings are being built in Asia and in the Middle East. The predictions are that by 2020, it's only seven years from now, 95% of all buildings over 200 meters will be built in Asia and in the Middle East. North America and Europe accounting for only 5% of these buildings. That's incredible. Tremendous changes. Let's take a step backwards and look at what, what the challenges are with these buildings, because these buildings have challenges. And one of the challenges was actually brought up already by Tim, that... Uh, as these buildings go up, rope weight just increases exponentially. 150 years ago, the skyscraper was made possible by uh, the elevator. At this very moment, the skyscraper is actually uh, not helped very much by the elevator. The elevator is becoming a bottleneck. At 500 to 600 meters, we see approximately the end 
of the elevator. Can't go much higher. You know, that weight just keeps going up. We need steel to carry steel with the ropes. And that rope weight goes up so heavily that, uh, that uh, the elevators become extremely heavy. And energy consumption becomes ridiculously big. We have other problems in these buildings. As these buildings get higher, the frequencies get lower, but so do the frequencies of our ropes. And when we go up this high, we actually coincide with the frequencies of the building, with the frequencies of the ropes, and we go into resonance. We get sway problems, serious sway problems. And we can do a lot of things to actually mitigate that, the, the problem a little bit, but we can't fully eliminate the problem. In heavy winds conditions, we need to slow down. We may even need to stop the elevators altogether. You know, that, that's tons and tons and tons of steel ropes. And we need to replace them every now and then. So it becomes extremely elaborate to replace them, extremely expensive to replace them. And by the way, the higher we go, the shorter that life of the rope becomes because we have to actually save some, some of the safety factor as much as we can to get, uh, to get that height done. So it becomes really, really difficult. Okay, let's see on what we have done to actually do something about that problem. And I'm going to show you a little video about this. Keeping pace with the growing demand to move more people ever higher requires far more than just gradual change. There comes a point when existing technology and solutions can be taken no further. A revolutionary breakthrough is then required if the needs of the urban environments of the future are to be met. As buildings rise higher, logistical demands rise with them. A typical ultra-high-rise building sees thousands of people moving around, each one using an elevator on average six times daily. That's around 50,000 elevator rides a day. This places huge demands on elevator technology. The moving parts of a single elevator carrying 24 passengers can weigh up to 27,000 kilos and consume 130,000 kilowatt hours of energy a year. The components used in high-rise elevator systems operate under highly demanding conditions, making durability a huge challenge. Elevators are also subject to severe strains such as building sway, which can put them out of service on windy days. It's clear that current elevator technology has taken us as far as it can, and that mere refinement is no longer enough. Connie's ongoing commitment to innovation has delivered a revolutionary solution, one that opens a world of new possibilities in high-rise building design. Kone Ultra Rope, a super light rope technology that sets a new benchmark for elevator performance. With its durable, lightweight carbon fiber core and special high friction coating, Kone Ultra Rope is the revolutionary breakthrough the industry has been waiting for. Kone Ultra Rope has been rigorously tested under the most extreme conditions and has been approved by independent third-party experts. This revolutionary new technology brings a whole host of valuable benefits. Not only does Kone Ultra Rope last twice as long as conventional steel rope, it's also less sensitive to building sway, adding up to a significant reduction in elevator downtime. With an elevator travel height of 500 meters, this lightweight rope cuts the elevator's moving mass by 60% and reduces energy consumption by 15%. When elevator travel heights increase in the future, even larger reductions can be achieved. Moving masses can be reduced by 90% and energy consumption by 45% for an elevator with a travel height of 800 meters. Kone Ultra Rope will take elevators higher than they've ever been before. In the future, it can enable travel heights of up to a thousand meters, twice as high as what's possible with today's technology. This groundbreaking innovation will support the design of more sustainable, higher performance buildings that are better equipped to meet the demands of the urban environments of tomorrow.
I'm happy to introduce ultra rope. Here it is. This is a piece of ultra rope. It will change the way we will look at the industry and, uh, and it will change the way we will design these buildings and it will change the way we will design elevators. Ultra rope will enable travels up to one kilometer and beyond. That's two times Taipei 101 stacked on top of each other in one go. At travels of 500 meters, we can take 60% of the weight of the moving masses away in single deck, 40% in double deck. We can reduce the energy consumption by 15% compared to st with steel ropes. Uh, if, we go, if we would be able to go up to 800 meters, we would see reductions in energy consumption of up to 40%. That is if you could do it with steel ropes. Life is also much longer, at least twice as long, 15 to 20 years at least. And it's way less sensitive to building sway because it's light. The frequencies are much higher than the frequencies of the buildings and will therefore not coincide with the building frequencies. And we don't have the downtime of building sway in high wind conditions. We've worked very long on getting ultra rope on the market. R&D started working on ultra rope back in 2004. You heard me right, nine years. It's a long time. Just getting the concept there was not that, uh, not that difficult. Ultra rope is made of carbon fiber with a high friction coat. Carbon fiber has a perfect fit for what we wanted to achieve. It is strong, it is light and we just had to find the right way of doing it. Getting the rope itself was one and a half years, but testing it, that's what took the majority of time. We tested it in our Tutri mine shaft in Finland. Our test shaft is uh, 305 meters of travel, about 1,000 feet in travel. It's by far the highest test tower in the whole world, and we could test ultra rope with speeds up to 15 meters in this test shaft in real conditions, 3,000 feet per minute. The second highest speed ever made at this moment. We did a lot of other testing as well, bending tests. We uh, aged the rope, bended it again, just to make sure that uh, we knew uh, that the rope would perform. We did fire testing, yeah, to make sure that it, it, it performed under fire conditions. We did friction testing, we checked uh, what would happen if foreign particles would get between the rope and the elevator system. You know, we're in the construction industry, so we have stones falling, screws falling, you know, tools falling between the systems. So we just had to make sure that it could last. You name any test, we did it. Ultra rope is certified by an authorized third body and complies with all the European and North American codes, which are the base for 95% of all world codes, and therefore we believe that ultra rope is easily acceptable in any market. Now let's see how ultra rope performs in a real building. We're gonna look at a building 640 meters high with 120 elevators in it, the highest travel being 550 meters, and there are 10 elevators in this building with travels over 400 meters. This building is a slightly modified building only. It's actually a building uh, being planned in Asia at this very moment. I just modified it slightly so it's not immediately recognizable. Let's have a look. If we compare this with conventional, if we compare conventional steel ropes with ultra rope, and by the way, by the way when I say conventional steel ropes, I mean ultra strong steel ropes. So high strength, ultra strong steel ropes. If you look at those 10 elevators with travels over 400 meters, we see that the total rope mass with steel ropes would be 186,500 kilos. That's nine and a half loaded 20 ton lorries. With ultra rope, this is brought down to 11,700 kilos for those 10 elevators. You know, that's a reduction of more than 90%. Just, just slightly over half a lorry. That's nine lorry savings in ropes only 
for 10 elevators. Total moving masses, 332,000 kilos with steel ropes. With ultra rope, 157,000 kilos, less than half of the masses moving around. And you know, all those weights are not on your structure. Structural savings there. If you look at the energy consumption, those 10 elevators would consume 1,180 megawatt hours every single year. With ultra rope, this is down to slightly over 1,000 megawatt hours, a reduction of over 15%. If you look at the biggest unit, you would see that the energy consumption would be, uh, sorry, that the maximum uh, amps pulled by the largest unit would be 1,125 amps. With ultra rope, this is only 835 amps. You know, pulling three of those big risers, that's a lot of copper, all the way up to that machine room. You're gonna save tens of thousands per elevator only on, uh, uh, when, you, when you use ultra rope. Incredible savings on top of the energy savings. We see a lot of opportunity here. The number of high-rise buildings is on the rise, and they are getting higher. So ultra rope was one necessity in the market. There are some uh, 600 buildings at the moment going up with travel heights over 200 meters in the next couple of years. There are currently three buildings 500 meters high or higher, ready. There's a fourth coming very soon. This, there are 20 more at least being planned at this very moment. Also, existing buildings can benefit from ultra rope. There are some 3,000 buildings that could benefit from uh, ultra rope modernization. Kind of ultra rope will change the way we will design these high rise buildings. It will change the way we will design elevators. It will definitely be a revolution to what's going to happen with, an, with the high-rise buildings in the next couple of years. It is truly the next leap. Thank you. <laughs>